Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in this video I'm going to talk to you about my tips to read more. Um, I know that this is a video that is done by a lot of Booktubers but I just wanted to put my thoughts out there as well. Maybe I've got a tip or two that you haven't heard about. So my first tip is read what you want, not what you think you should be reading. There are, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, um, it, I don't think it happens quite so much now, but I did notice it certainly when I was discovering um, Booktube, there were a lot of books that you saw absolutely everywhere. It didn't matter whether that YouTuber read them or not, read that sort of book or not, they would have it on their channel. They would be showing it, they would be hauling it, they would be talking about it. They may not necessarily read it, but, they they're basically you'd find that new releases would be shoved under your nose and you would be told that they were the next best thing since sliced bread and it made you think you had to read those books don't get that thought out of your head work out what you like and read it if you like romance read romance if you like fantasy read fantasy if you like sci-fi read sci-fi if you like non-fiction read non-fiction you you shouldn't feel that you have to read something just because someone else is. If you go back through my videos, you'll find that actually a lot of the books I talk about, you don't hear about elsewhere on YouTube because I don't allow my reading to be influenced in that manner. So yes, I read what I want to read when I want to read it and not because someone has told me I should be reading it. And my next tip kind of follows on from that. Um, Allow yourself to mood read. Um, don't think you have to have a set TBR just because YouTube is full of TBRs and I know I set them for myself, but if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll find that probably most of the time, I don't always read everything I set for myself at the beginning of the month. There will be books that I talk about that weren't in my TBR at all because I'm a mood reader. I can't stick to a set TBR. It's very, very rare that I can stick to a set TBR. Um, quite often the only books that I will actually read off my TBR are the ones that are for my book club. Other than that, I have an idea of what I think I might want to read coming up. So that's how I set my TBR. But I don't then feel like I have to stick to it. And I read what I want. So if... I've read the first book in a romance series and then decide I don't want to read the next one. I don't read it. Um, I'll go straight to fantasy. Um, but you have to be comfortable with what you're reading. And if you're forcing yourself to read something that you're not in the mood for, that's a surefire way to put yourself into a slump. So put that book down and read something else that you know that you are in the mood for. And tip number three is going to follow straight on from that. Don't be afraid to DNF. If you are not enjoying the book, put it down. Take it back to the library. Give it to the charity shop if you own it and you don't think you're ever going to read it again. If it's a book you're reading, but it's not a book that maybe you're enjoying right now um, and you think you could read it again, put it down for now and come back to it at another time when maybe you're in a different frame of mind. I have certainly done that with books and found that I loved them when I tried to reread but at the point that I wasn't getting on with them I decided no I'll put them down I'll come back to them another day you can't not every book you pick up is going to be right for the moment that you're in not every book is going to be right for you um occasionally you'll come across a book that will be distressing it might be a book that has certain triggers in it that cause you mental health issues put the book down don't keep reading it Get rid of it if you need to. It gives you more time, more freedom. It stops you from being in a slump and it means you can move on more quickly to books that you are going to enjoy and love. Tip number four is try different formats of books. I very rarely use audiobooks. Um, I don't get on with them that well because I don't always focus. I, I don't always focus on the book and take in everything um, that's happening. So. Certainly for fantasy, audiobooks for me are not a great fit. However, I do use them because they're great when I'm on the go. If 
I want a little bit of background noise, but I'm maybe moving around the flat as I'm cleaning or I'm out for a walk um, and don't want to listen to music, then audiobooks are great for that because they give me the opportunity to carry on with the story um, when I'm not actually able to physically either hold a physical book or hold my e-reader. Again, don't be afraid of ebooks. If you're not sure about ebooks, use what if you've got um i don't know if ibooks are still going i have a feeling ibooks got shut down i'm not sure anyway if kobo has an app kindle has an app there's google play books um there are other uh ways to read books try them on your phone if you've got a tablet try the apps on your on your tablet um but give ebooks a go i take my kindle virtually everywhere with me um because it's convenient. Um, I used to have to commute to work on the bus, by bus, and it was excellent. It meant that when I was reading, where is it? Let's find it. When I was reading a tome like this, which is my huge, like eight, 900 page Robin Hood book, I didn't have to lug this in my handbag. I picked up my Kindle and took my Kindle. Um, yeah, they're great for ease of ease of use. Um, if you if you read on holiday, um, Kindle ebooks are going to be better for you because you don't have to lug all those books away with you. Um, so don't be afraid to try. A lot of people say, "Oh, I couldn't read an ebook; they're not for me." Give them a go because you never know. They might not replace paper and ink books. If you're an audiobook lover, they might not replace audiobooks. And the same with audiobooks and paper and ink. If your main reading is Kindle, if your main reading is all audiobooks, try different formats because they will give you a certain something um, and they might just help keep that spark for reading going. Tip number five is have a book with you wherever you go. As I just said with the last tip, I take my Kindle almost everywhere. I rarely ever use my phone for reading these days because I have a Kindle but there are times when it's not appropriate to take my Kindle. I have the Kindle app on my phone. If I'm going to be somewhere where I think um, I might have five minutes to read but it wouldn't be appropriate to whip out the Kindle um, but I could get away with scrolling through my phone then I'll download the book I'm reading to the phone and pick it up from there. Um, a lot of these apps now I haven't investigated Kobo and the like but I know Amazon has uh, what they call WhisperSync, which means if you have that um, turned on on your uh, Amazon account, then if you've been reading a book and you've synced it on your Kindle, um, when you then download it to your phone, um, and sometimes with the audiobooks as well, if there's if you've got Audible, um, there's crossover there. Um, it will say, "Do you want to pick up where you last left off?" And you can say yes and carry on with where you were. So you don't even need to worry about not being able to find your place in the book so i would definitely say take a book with you everywhere um during the uh first lockdown that we had in march and april 2020 quite often i had to queue to wait to go into the supermarket because they were only allowing certain people in i'd stand there with my phone reading a book while i was waiting in the queue if you're in a queue at a checkout um, there's a, a well-known shop in the UK called Primark. Quite often in my local Primark, if I'm buying something I have to queue, I'll stand and read a few lines because it just gives me a few more pages um, to get through. And it's just read every opportunity that you can get. Um, you can make the most of any opportunity. Tip number six is probably something we're all guilty of. It's certainly something I'm guilty of doing and that's having the TV on when you're not really watching. So this tip, turn the TV off. If it's background noise you want, um, if you've got things like Netflix um, or music channels, um, or, you know, they could be great for background noise. Um, but a lot of them now, you may find that actually they have ambient noise. So you might be able to find a crackling fireplace. I have um, a playlist set up on my music app that is called Reading 
and um, it's not a public playlist so it's not something I can share with anybody because I'm not able to do that on the music app that I use but basically it's it's uh, film scores that are instrumental only so things like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and all that sort of thing um, but they're instrumental so there's no words to distract me and it just becomes ambient background noise the TV doesn't do that turn it off if you are not watching it if it is literally on just for something to do um because we all do that as well so so if it's just background noise turn it off you can find something else if you are just mindlessly scrolling trying to find something to watch turn it off pick up your book you obviously don't want to watch anything so why why do you have it on so absolutely definitely one of my top tips is turn off the tv and my final tip links into taking a book with you everywhere and that is make time to read certainly at the start and end of the day um the start of the day is a tip that i picked up a long time ago through a website forum for another hobby that i have and someone on there used to get up an hour before they actually needed to every day so they could sit down and do that hobby for an hour and then they would get up and start do start doing their day that's a great thing to do with reading as well because it's a great way to wake up it's a great way to be restful have your breakfast while you're reading drink your first cup of coffee for the day you're not going to rush it you'll digest your food better um because you're not rushing your food to to while you're getting ready to to go to work um or to start your day but yes make time so even if it's only 20 minutes just make that time um at the start of the day and again at the end of the day we shouldn't be using our phones before we go to bed we should be putting them away blue light isn't good for you it doesn't help you settle i'm certainly finding that um and yeah you should absolutely make time during the day i read on my lunch break at work i take my current book to work with me um and i read on my lunch break uh sometimes i listen to audiobooks in the car when i'm driving to work if i've got an audiobook on the go um i will rush through doing washing up so that i can go back and sit down with my book um i don't mindlessly scroll i will put my phone on airplane mode um and just so that i can't actually use my phone i don't have a tablet um either uh so you know to turn my laptop on to do anything is a bit of a chore so yeah just just give it a go um and find that time those spare few minutes will make all the difference to your reading so those are my top tips for how to read more um i do you have any tips that i haven't listed in this video if you have link them down below because I'm sure everybody would love to get as many tips as they possibly can to maximise their reading time. If you have enjoyed this video then please do give me a like and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel. If you don't know I make videos every week and they go up at Monday 6.30pm UK time and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye!